Just in case you haven't yet been properly introduced, JavaScript is a powerful programming language that provides significant value in web development. Benefits include server-side development through Node.js, client-side interactivity where scripts run directly within your user's browsers, responsive and interactive user interfaces, broad API and third-party service integration that permits multi-tier applications, cross-platform mobile app development through frameworks like React Native and Ionic, and near-universal browser support and vast ecosystems of libraries, frameworks, and tools. If you're planning to add interactivity into any of your websites, then you'll need to pick up your JavaScript skills. But the basics are actually pretty straightforward. And if you've already got experience with another programming language, then you'll be moving way beyond the basics in no time. By the way, there isn't really any technical connection between JavaScript and the Java programming language. Sometime after Brendan Eich created his live script language at Netscape in just 10 days back in 1995, legend has it, he renamed his project JavaScript to leverage the popularity of Java at the time. But that was more of a marketing strategy than an indication of any technical relationship. In this section, we're going to explore the basics of JavaScript syntax and functionality. We'll see how JavaScript handles data variables, how it can create and call functions, and how you can use JavaScript to manipulate HTML and CSS. Let's get started. Much the way you saw with CSS, you can include JavaScript code in your web pages either by referencing an external .js file as an attribute of a script tag, or by dropping your code between script tags in the header section of your HTML. Both work fine. Since the adoption of HTML5, however, you no longer need to add the text slash JavaScript as an attribute of the script tag. At this point, JavaScript is the default scripting language for HTML. Here's a simple hello world kind of script that'll work to get us up and running. You can see that the JavaScript is all in between the two script tags and contains its own comment line. I really don't know why it has to be this way, but the comment escape codes for one language never seem to work for another. In the JavaScript world, it seems that you'll need two forward slashes. The first line of real code introduces a new function that's named greet. The parentheses are necessary, and I assure you, you'll make good use of them later. The function's code must all lie between two curly braces, the way you see here. This function is just two lines. The first uses var to declare a variable that'll be called name. Name will take the value entered by the users when they're prompted with the what's your name question. Once a value has been entered, alert will generate a pop-up window with the text hello with a comma in space, the current value of the name variable, and an exclamation mark. The plus character serves to concatenate all these values into a single sentence. But hang on, you can't see any name entry field in this page, can you? And how exactly is the function executed? Excellent question. That'll happen down in the HTML section. This is basically a button tag that has a text label of say hello. But it's the tag's attribute that really interests us. OnClick calls our greet function. In other words, OnClick tells the browser to execute the greet function whenever the button is clicked. Let's see how it goes. I'll click the button and a new dialog box opens with a data entry field looking for my name. I'll type that in and then click OK. We can see that nice concatenated sentence, all perfectly arranged. That was fun. But before moving on, I should remind you that JavaScript was built for browsers. So we can expect there will be some useful integrations. Well, perhaps the most useful of them all is the console. Let me just increase the size here to make it easier for you to see what's coming. Then I'll right-click on an empty spot in the page and select Inspect. This should work no matter what browser you're using. Hitting F12 is another way to get to the same place. This is known as the developer's console because there are all kinds of helpful debugging and code analysis features packed in. Some browsers will place the console along the bottom of the screen, but my Brave browser puts it along the right side. Okay, here in the Elements tab, you can see a representation of the page code. I'll expand the head and then the script sections so you can see what we're working with. But let me move over to the console tab, where there's a live JavaScript environment waiting for us. I'm going to paste 
three JavaScript operations into the console, which you can actually test. Now you should be aware that console.log is a built-in function that allows you to output messages or values to the console. It's commonly used for debugging and displaying information during the development process. So as a rule, you'll only want to use the console log function here. This would be a great opportunity to introduce you to some JavaScript syntax. The function accepts one or more arguments within parentheses and prints them to the console. The first execution is the sum of 2 plus 2. From here we can see that you can use any of the arithmetic operators, plus, minus, the asterisk for multiplication, the forward slash for division, the right angle for greater than, and the left angle for less than, and the equal sign within your JavaScript code. The only other thing about this that might catch your attention is the semicolon that follows. As before, make sure it's there. The second line contains another example of concatenation. This one will print the word hello, followed by a space, and then the word world. Before running the next command, we'll declare a variable called fruits, which will contain an array of three words, apple, banana, and orange. The code that follows will take the variable fruits and output its length. I'll hit enter to run all the commands in one go. There are three lines of output, four, hello world, and three, which is exactly what we would have expected. That was nice and everything, but it hardly makes use of my browser's full resources. So now let me run a command that's got an error. I'll add a couple of illegal characters to the operation, hit enter again, and see what happens. Aha! An uncaught syntax error. If this were real code, we'd be a step closer to solving a bug.